I want to cry. It's so good. It's so good. <sighs> สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. So one of the most iconic dishes of Thailand is boat noodles or ก๋วยเตี๋ยวเรือ Now Thai people love boat noodles, and every time I have one, I am amazed by the amount of incredible flavors that are packed into a tiny little bowl. But here in North America, unless you live in a big city, it is not easy to find, and even if you can find it, it's not always what it's supposed to be. So today, I want to show you how to make boat noodles that will taste just like what you can get in Thailand. It is a complex dish with a lot of ingredients, which is why it's so good. But it is not hard; it just takes time. So it makes a great weekend project, and it keeps well, so you can even make it on the weekend and have it throughout the week. All right, let's start with the heart of Koi Tiao Rue: the broth. I've got some pork neck bones here, and I like neck bones because it has a lot of meat on it, which we will eat later. But other kinds of bones or beef bones also work. Cover it with water and bring to a simmer, and then let it simmer gently for about 30 minutes. Meanwhile, we're gonna prep our aromatics. I've got crushed cinnamon stick, star anise, coriander seeds, ground white pepper, galangal, crushed cilantro roots, or you can use stems if you like, onion, crushed garlic. Daikon and a pandan leaf, which is optional. I'm going to toast my cinnamon, star anise, and coriander seeds in a dry skillet on medium high heat until they're slightly charred. Let them cool a bit, and then put them in a soup infusion bag like this one or cheesecloth. Then I'm going to add the galangal slices and cilantro roots in here as well. Back to the broth, which should now be very scummy. So we're gonna skim it all off. Once it's clean, in goes our spice bag and the rest of our aromatics. The pandan leaf I'm going to fold in half and then tie into a knot. This will bruise and release the aroma, and it'll also help it fit into the pot. Now the seasonings. I'm gonna add soy sauce, golden mountain sauce or Maggi seasoning. t a o j i a o which is Thai fermented soybean paste, you can use miso instead. Black soy sauce or dark soy sauce for the color. Fish sauce, white vinegar, and some rock sugar, which is traditional, but granulated sugar will be just fine. And now we just let that simmer gently for another hour and 15 minutes. And if the bones become exposed, just top it up with water just until the bones are completely submerged. While that's simmering, let's talk noodles. When you go to Thailand and order boat noodles, most vendors are going to offer you several noodle options, including rice vermicelli or what we call sen mi, small-sized rice noodles or sen lek, wonton noodles or egg noodles or bak mi, fresh wide rice noodles or sen yai, glass noodles or wun sen, and even sometimes. Mama noodles, Mama being Thailand's favorite brand of instant noodles, and you can use any of these. There's no right, there's no wrong. If you're going to use uh, the dried noodles, they need to be soaked in room temp water until pliable before using. And I'll include the different timing for different sizes in the blog post. The fresh noodles and instant noodles can all be cooked directly before serving. And today, I'm going to use my favorite, and I think also the most popular, which is sen lek. All right, let's move on to the protein. I'm gonna make some marinated pork by thinly slicing some pork shoulder, which is nice and fatty and flavorful. But you can use a tender cut of beef instead as well. I'm gonna marinate it simply with soy sauce and a little bit of sugar and give that a good mix. It just needs 10 to 15 minutes, so this will be ready when you are. My favorite protein, however, is these Asian-style meatballs, which you can buy at any Asian grocery store. Pork or beef will work, whatever you prefer. Because these are huge, I'm just cutting them down into bite-sized pieces. If yours are small, you don't have to do anything with them. You can make these from scratch, but we have enough to do already, and the vendors in Thailand buy them as well. Let's move on to toppings and condiments. You are going to need bean sprouts, water spinach or regular spinach, cilantro. And/or green onions, Thai basil, which is optional, 
and the most important condiment for boat noodles, chili vinegar, which I cheat by mixing some sambal olek with white vinegar and it totally does the trick, but I'll include the from scratch recipe on the blog post as well. Now I'm going to tell you about the secret ingredient that makes this dish, blood. Now, before you get squeamish, let me assure you that this will not taste or smell like blood. You probably wouldn't know it was there if I didn't tell you. And in fact, when I was a kid, I spent years never knowing that there was blood in boat noodles until I finally saw somebody make it. The blood will add that magical richness, that je ne sais quoi, that sets boat noodles apart from all the other noodle soups. It really makes a difference. You don't have to add it but I am telling you that it is not as good without it. And I'll just leave it there. A quick travel tip, when you're in Thailand, boat noodles with blood is called Kuei Tiao Rue Nam Tok. Nam Tok is the part that refers to the blood, and that is the default for most places. So if you don't want blood, you will have to specify, you have to say, Mai Tok, and then they won't add it. Would you be sad? But you do you. And by the way, Nam Tok means waterfall, and in the blog post, I'll include a story about why that term is used. You can buy liquid blood, usually frozen at some Asian grocery stores, but if you have a nice European butcher, check with them because sometimes they have it for black pudding. Beef blood, pork blood, you can use both of them, but do not confuse this with cooked blood, which is going to be a solid block with a texture similar to tofu. We cannot use that for this purpose. If you can't find it, I've heard some people using coconut milk instead to thicken the broth. Obviously not the same, but if you can't find it, then that's what you do. All right, let's finish up our broth. Once the broth is done simmering, I'm going to remove the spice bag and then remove all the vegetables as well. The onions and garlic are going to be kind of dissolved by now, but if they're still in pieces, you can eat them. The daikon, you definitely want to keep and eat. They are super, super tasty. Remove the bones and set that aside for now. We're going to pick the meat off of them later. Okay, now we need to taste the broth and you want it to be a little too strong right now because it'll get diluted by the noodles. So you can add more salt or sugar as needed here. Next, we're going to cook our marinated pork right in this broth. So I'm putting it inside the skimmer and then stir it around so the broth can be flavored with all the pork juices. This will take less than a minute and it should be done. Don't overcook it. Then we're going to add the meatballs to the broth. They're already cooked, so all they need to do is heat through and just hang out. Cover it, set it aside for now until we're ready to eat. Finally, I'm going to pick off all of this tender, flavorful meat from the pork bones. And this is not something you would get from a street vendor, so consider this the prize for all of your efforts. And it is so, so good. And that's it. It's assembly time. All right, I got all my things and I feel like a street vendor. So fun fact, in Thailand, when you buy boat noodles, they're going to come in these teeny tiny snack sized bowls. This is because originally when they were actually sold on boats, passing around a big bowl full of hot soup on a wobbly boat was not practical. So they use these tiny bowls and they fill it barely halfway. The broth is super strong and flavorful, so you don't need to put a lot. And so most people will end up eating anywhere between three to five bowls each, sometimes even more. But if someone else is cooking, five bowls per person is no problem. If I'm cooking, I am not making five bowls per person. Thank you very much. So we are going to make them full size. Okay, so I've got a pot of blanching water here. We're going to cook our noodles and vegetables. Tip, use your biggest pot, fill up the water a lot. If you don't have a lot of water, after your first batch, the water will cool down so much that it'll take you a long time to cook the following batches. I've got my noodles soaked and ready to go in a bowl. And I do suggest separating your noodles while it's still raw and not just cooking all the portions in one pot because it is a pain to separate cooked hot noodles into portions, but it's very easy to separate soaked noodles. All right, it is now boiling. By the way, a noodle strainer like this is super handy if you're going to eat like noodle soups with any frequency at all. You can find it at many, many Asian grocery stores. If you don't have it, a metal sieve like this is fine as long as it's, you can submerge it into your pot. A lot of times these are a bit too wide. Okay. Noodles into the noodle strainer along with your bean sprouts and the 
greens, my water spinach, and then into here for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Slow count, okay? Not big count. And then up, shake it off, and into the bowl. Yeah. So, a quick tip. You'll notice that my water has now stopped boiling. If your water is no longer boiling for your second batch, you need to extend the time that it's in the water. So your second batch might have to be 10, minute, 10 seconds, 15 seconds. Now it's boiling again, so if I were to do my second batch now, it can just be 5 seconds, but sometimes your pot is smaller or whatever, so just use your judgment. If in doubt, check the texture of the noodles. It should be just a little bit chewier because we're going to put hot broth on it, but it shouldn't taste totally undercooked. All right, we're going to do a pot switcheroo. Be right back. This is where the magic happens. I've got my broth here. It is boiling and I'm going to pour the blood while stirring. It's very important because the blood's going to cook instantly. And if you don't, it'll just cook into big clumps, which you don't want to have happen, right? There we go. And in Thailand, the blood is added to order, so it always goes in at the last minute. And you can see how much that broth just becomes thick and rich. Mmm! And this is like, yes, you see that broth thickness and you know this is boat noodles. Okay. Rinse everything out. Perfect. All right. And now all we have to do is broth over noodles. Mm. And by the way, the meatballs don't overcook, so they can hang out in there as long as you need them to. Ooh. Salivating all our extra protein, so the sliced pork, our tender braised pork. Mm, I'm most excited about this some garnishes, some chopped cilantro, green onions. Thai basil usually comes on the table on the side in most boat noodle restaurants, but you know, if you're at home, you can just stick them right in. You can tear up the big ones if you like. Put them in there. And then, yes, there's one more ingredient that I didn't tell you about because I didn't want to overwhelm you. But you can also add fried garlic and garlic oil, which is typical of most Thai noodle soups. Um, for boat noodles, I find it less important because the flavor of the broth is so strong that it doesn't make as big of a difference. But for certain noodles with lighter broths, it really makes a big difference. But I always have this on hand. I'll include a recipe of how to make it. It's not hard. And that is it. Boat noodles. Let's eat. And just when you thought there couldn't possibly be any more ingredients, there are more ingredients! Except these are more like table-side condiments. Not the end of the world if you don't have them. Crispy pork rind is classic and you just add them to the broth and they'll soften slightly in the broth or just eat it on the side. It goes so well together. Chili flakes if you want it extra spicy, which I feel like boat noodles, if it's not spicy, it's not very good. And then chili vinegar that we made earlier. Now, I personally really love boat noodles with a good vinegary zing, but that is a two taste. So not the end of the world if you don't end up adding any, but I recommend you do. All right, here's the moment we're waiting for. Mix everything together. It smells like Thailand. I want to cry. It's so good. It's so good! <sighs> I can just drink the broth. You don't need anything else. Mm. Life is good. I cannot explain to you how good this is. And if you were to go to Thailand and you ask me, what is like a must have dish in Thailand? I would say boat noodles. Like, you know, I've said, I've said many things are must haves in Thailand, but if it really comes down to it, I would say boat noodles for a couple of reasons. One, 
it is very hard to find here where really hard to find a good one here and two it's not a quick and easy dish right but if you're not going to Thailand anytime soon this is an experience that I think you should have make a weekend project out of it and you will be blown away there are many things that you can do in advance so that the whole the day of isn't such a big production and I will include all of those tips in the blog post and that is it. As always, the recipe will be on hotthaikitchen.com. A special thanks to all of our Patreon members who help support the show. And if you want to know what that's all about, how you can get bonus recipes and get in direct contact with me, check out the link in the description below. Thank you as always for watching, and I will see you next time. Sawadee ka!